Let's suppose that an object is free falling vertically downward and at time equals zero has a velocity of v equals v naught. Now we're making the assumption that our object is small and has a low velocity. We want to determine what the equation for velocity with respect to time is. So let's begin by labeling all the forces acting on our object as it's free falling downward along the y-axis. So one force, the force of gravity, our net force that creates our acceleration, points downward along our x-axis. And likewise, we have a resistive force known as the drag force. That points in the opposite direction of the net force, so it points upward along the y-axis. So what exactly is the formula for F drag? Well, because we made this assumption, because our object is small and has a low velocity, we can use the following formula for drag. So the drag force is equal to negative of B times V, where B is simply our proportionality constant, V is our velocity, and the negative sign simply means our force is in opposite direction of motion. So this points downward, this points upward. So we choose downward to be positive because our object is moving downward, and we take the sum, we sum up all the forces acting on our object along the y-axis and we get the following equation. So, the sum of all the forces is equal to the gravitational force m times g minus b times v. Now, this equals, according to Newton's second law of motion, m times a. And recall that a, or instantaneous acceleration, is given by taking our derivative of the velocity function. So we can rewrite a in terms of dv divided by dt, where dv is simply our infinitely small change in v, and dt is our infinitely small change in time. So, now we simply want to bring dt on one side and everything else on the other side. So we bring dt on the left side and everything else on the right side, we get the following equation. So dt is equal to m times dv divided by this whole side, so mg minus bv. Now we work with the right side. We divide each term by m. So that the m here cancels, we're left with dv, m here cancels, so we're left with simply g, and we divide this side by m, and we get the following term. So we have our infinitely small change in t, dt, is equal to dv divided by g minus bv divided by m. And now we want to take the definite integral of both sides. So we take the definite integral of our left side of dt, that's what we get here, from t equals 0 to t, and we take the definite integral from v naught to v of the right side, and we get the following equation. So the integral of this side is equal to the integral of the right side. Whatever we do to the left side, we must do exactly that to the right side. So let's take the integral of both of these sides. So the left side simply becomes t after we evaluate it. And if we take the integral of the right side, we get this term, but let's not yet evaluate it. Notice that on the outside, we have negative m divided by b, so let's multiply both sides by negative b divided by m, so that we bring this term on the left side, and we get the following result. Negative b times t divided by m equals the natural log of this whole guy. So now let's actually evaluate this side from v naught to v, and we get the following result. So we have negative bt divided by m, we have the natural log of this minus the natural log of this, so we next use our log laws and we combine the, these guys and we get the following result. We simply divide this by this. So we get minus bt divided by m equals natural log of this whole guy. So now we take the exponent e of both sides and we get that this side we simply have e to the power minus bt divided by m and e of ln is simply, well they cancel and we're left with this. So now we take this whole guy and we bring it to the other side 
and that's exactly what we do in this side. And finally, we solve for our V. So we bring this term to this side, this term to this side, and we divide by B, and this is exactly what we get. So our velocity is equal to this whole function. So we can play around with the right side, and our end result looks something like this. So our velocity, the magnitude of velocity at any given time is equal to m times g divided by b minus this whole sum.